Um, I would like to give, uh, just before we move to the question and answer session and then a few comments by others, I would like to give the uh, floor to the host of this, uh, of this event. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe we had uh, a very good section uh, once we heard uh, many very interesting constructive uh, opinions and, and good suggestions. Now, what I miss most uh, in uh, numerous, numerous discussions uh, about Afghanistan here in the house, as well as uh, the invitees uh, from out outside. I mean, there is no lack of criticism, and we accept this. We are not afraid of this. I mean, this house is really based on a multi-opinion uh, uh, approach. But, uh, I mean, very often, I mean, from uh, there is no bridge from uh, criticism to some constructive proposal. And what, what do I mean? I mean, we need some good plans, maps. How to advance constructive criticism and good proposals towards something. If we think that we have changed the situation on the ground, even after our great session, doing nothing with kind of follow-up, approaching, changing decisions, approaching decision makers, so then we are wrong. And you know, I mean, it can't be like uh, many times attack on, on some positions and then withdrawing to the previous positions. I mean, it, it doesn't change the scenery. So we have to understand, completely agreeing that we have to think about uh, long-term vision but we have to base our actions sometimes on short term and medium term. Otherwise, will be no horizon approaching us. How to make this? I mean, how to bring uh, very diverse, very competent uh, and uh, good willing um, Afghan uh, exile community, locally based uh, experts, I mean, to, to be table, the proposal to come up with uh, hopefully one plan. Imagine we have two plans. Which one to take? Huh? Again, it will be a basis for disagreement. So, I mean, ultimately, we should come up uh, with, uh, let's say, one plan which probably doesn't satisfy all. And here, Ambassador Brandt will uh, support my probably opinion as uh, the best uh, principle of uh, decision making in Brussels is a compromise. One. Nobody is happy for 100%. But still, can live with the agreed plan because it's, it's a good compromise. And in, in that compromise, you see something of, uh, of your own. I mean, your contribution, your vision, and so on and so forth. But others are given the same rights and probably expectations. So that's why this compromise based uh, approach and constructive approach. Um, should be transformed into, into some process of decision making because we can't wait. I mean, time will, is not a solution for Afghanistan. I agree. We have watches, uh, and uh, many people uh, in, in Afghanistan have time, not necessarily best, uh, best of them, but, but I mean, time itself is not a solution. It's just postponement. In a, in a year time, we are back into this room, and we might uh, face much of, uh, of, uh, of the same. Secondly, <clears throat> you know, I mean, for very long time, the European Union was the biggest donor for Afghanistan. And we knew exactly why do we do this. Far biggest, far biggest. And I don't include uh, the donations from uh, the member states. If we take donations from the member states, I mean, we are a world leader in uh, uh, assisting uh, Afghanistan. If uh, there is no change and uh, well, the situation on the ground uh, will further deteriorate, and uh, unfortunately it's probably already preset uh, tendency, how should we convince this house to vote for the budget? next year and a year after. 
bringing more and more support for Afghanistan. It's not automatic, it's not easy. Um, there is no lack for, you know, for places, for countries, for uh, people who need uh, more assistance. I mean, unfortunately, the global, uh, overall globally situation is not uh, improving at the speed uh, we wish. So we need some good, again, suggestion. Why the European Union, in very complicated circumstances, must be the biggest donor? Given there is a decreasing of uh, corruption, it's a it's a major disease. It's a major disease, and it's a public secret. Let's be frank again. Let's be frank again. And, and uh, if we are uh, to hide uh, from this uh, uh, unpleasant truth, so we will not uh, uh, probably uh, tackle uh, real uh, causes or symptoms as. Uh, as it was rightly said before. And finally, uh, unfortunately, I don't see <coughs> improving uh, regional situation. No, I mean, uh, in, uh, in, in, in times of uh, complicated domestic developments, uh, I think we, we see not really a um, situation in, uh, on, on the regional scale which might make us a bit more optimistic. So that's why, let's make a, a map. A map for, I don't know, five, three years, five years, ten years. But we have to have a map, and it must be agreed among uh, stakeholders. Afghan owned, all right, criticized, but discussed and agreed, and to be implemented, because with no implementation, there uh, will be no change. Sorry, I mean, I, I'm very blunt uh, on this. And don't take it uh, personally, but, uh, you know, sometimes we really have uh, too short hands of to change the situation. i give you another example. With Belarus, for example. We go from one uh, uh, um, situation to another, but uh, because of self-isolation, self-imposed rules, okay, uh, domestically tight control, there's very little of, uh, sometimes, of our impact. That's why we have uh, a situation in the middle of Europe, with the dictator for 27 years, for 28 years, controlling the uh, situation and uh, somehow succeeding because of this. some backing from the east, sometimes uh, one uh, player or another comes into the picture. So that's why, you know, it's, it's not Afghan unique. And uh, uh, we have to take this into account because I don't want him to be, you know, blamed for kind of. Uh, our policy line as we make experiments with Afghanistan. No, I mean, we should uh, refrain from this and we, we have to refuse that we, we try to make any uh, experiments with Afghanistan. No wish, no will, and, uh, and there will be no such a policy line. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Srivish. Um, I think you have, you have uh, hit uh, the, the nail on its head. Uh, of course, criticism is fine. There is, of course, also a lot of introspection to be done among, uh, among the people of Afghanistan, but also the region. And uh, I would say to the audience, and many people here, Malay Scott Tabari, there are some people from the Russian protection movement, the, the, the non-violent actors in the region. Um, this is uh, what, what the MEP is saying is basically uh, you know, uh, an invitation to all these uh, non-violent actors to not just come to this conference and let's talk and have a lunch and make some pictures. Let's proceed with this, but uh, and to the speakers to come up with comprehensive to keep the engagement going. Uh, and it's an invitation to the people here to do this on the, on the same topic, a bit deeper with other speakers, more a few months down the line again, until we reach some consensus where we can because we can only blame him or this institution when we give them something concrete and they don't act upon it. But if you don't do that, then we can't blame. It. So I, I, I think that's an invitation for, for everyone here to, to keep going with this. And I, I can assure you uh, that EFSAS um, will follow this up uh, soon again uh, until we reach a consensus uh, somewhere.